So here we have glycolysis, and you know it's something that a lot of or pretty much all high school and college biology students need to know about. You know, and so the question I'm going to ask is, how do we remember the order of the molecules? These molecules here in glycolysis. How do we remember the order? And that you know that's something that I've kind of struggled with, and I you know I never felt like my memory was very good. And so let's talk about a way to tackle that. So first of all, I just want to ask right off the bat, who cares? So memorization, right, often gets this bad rap because people say that rote memorization of facts isn't going to help you. And so, you know, I think that's, that idea is a whole discussion in itself, but I just want to say, you know, I'd argue that if you really take these things, like these steps in glycolysis that you're learning and you keep them at the front of your mind and actively, actively integrate them into what you're studying, you'll make new connections you never would have made and you'll learn and understand new information a lot faster. So the method that I'm gonna talk about for tackling this memory palace, or tackling this glycolysis idea is called the memory palace, right? The memory palace. And people also refer to it as the journey method. So if you see journey method, that's just the same idea as the memory palace. And so this is exactly how all professional memory competitors and things like the World Memory Championships can memorize incredibly large amounts of stuff. So I've you know been practicing this idea for a long time, for two years, and I've been able to memorize a deck of shuffled playing cards in 21 seconds and a 400 digit number in less than five minutes. And you know, like I said, I have, I thought my memory was pretty bad, so I know that anyone can do this and, and you can do it too. So let me go ahead and get into the gist, the gist of the memory palace idea. And then we'll, we'll dive into this example of glycolysis. So, you know, what exactly is the memory palace and how do we crack it? How do we get the most benefits from it. So what we're going to do first is start with a palace. So that's just any location that you can visualize well. That could be your house, it could be your apartment, it could be your the place you work, anything like that. So then we're going to plot a journey through our palace and we're going to pick locations along that along that journey called loci. And so that could be like a couch, uh, it could be the TV, it could be the dinner table, anything like that. And then what we're going to do is we're going to use this idea of rave that I talked about in the last video to create strong emotional images that symbolize what we want to remember. So here, that's these glycolysis molecules. And we're going to put them onto our loci. And then we're going to mentally run back through our palace and recall the order of these glycolysis molecules. Okay, so let's get right into this glycolysis example. So the first, I'm going to use my house and... You know, I'll try to pick general things that you can visualize too. So the first loci, I'm going to use five loci. And so we're going to put two glycolysis molecules on each locus. So the first one is going to be the mailbox, my mailbox. So maybe it looks something like this. Right there, there's a mailbox. So our two molecules here are glucose and glucose 6-phosphate, which I'll, for the, in the interest of time, I'll just write this G6P. So glucose and glucose 6-phosphate. So I look at glucose, and the first thing that jumps into my head, and you can use whatever creative association you know, springs, springs to your mind, is glue. So this is, this is my association, glue and glucose. Glucose 6-phosphate, in a similar vein, I think of glue, and to represent this 6 here, I think of an elephant. And so you know, I kind of just have this system for, for numbers, and to me, this six looks kind of like an elephant. There's maybe the ears and it's flinging its trunk up like that. So glu glucose six phosphate, glue and elephant. Okay, so let's get right into this visualization process. So there maybe we have some glue and you can imagine that maybe it's you know, putting all this glue on the mailbox here and then maybe when you close the mailbox, it, it shuts it and you have a hard time getting it open and that's kind of our emotional connection to this idea. And then so we're gonna move from there onto glucose six phosphate. We're gonna picture an elephant in here, elephant, apologies for the, for the bad drawing. And maybe, you know, there's glue that's been stuck to his feet and he, he can't get up and now that this lid is glued shut, he's having a hard time getting out and so those are our emotions associated with this locus. So moving on, let's move on to get through this whole glycolysis example. So the next one I'll use is the front door. So we have the front door. Our molecules for the front door are going to be fructose 6-phosphate, which I'll just write as F6P, fructose 6-phosphate, and fructose 1,6-bisphosphate, fructose 1,6-bisphosphate. So our images for these, the ones that I'm gonna, that I think of at least are, so I see fructose and I think of a fruit. So 
let me just use pineapple as the fruit, my fruit of choice. So pineapple, and then again for the six, I will use an elephant, six for elephant. And then, so I'm just gonna focus on this little one here because the rest of it's kind of similar, and so that will be a pencil. So the pencil stands for one. So we're at our front door. You can imagine here, this is your front door. There's maybe the doorknob and the doorbell, and this giant elephant, this giant elephant has come up to your front door and he spotted this pineapple that's for some reason lying on your front door and he's trying to pick it up with his trunk maybe and maybe he's having a hard time and now moving on we'll think of a big pencil say there's a pencil here and it just kind of jams into the pineapple there and maybe maybe scares the elephant a little bit so so that's our two molecules for our locus of the front door so continuing on our next locus is going to be the oven so maybe the oven in your kitchen right and our molecules there are going to be glyceraldehyde 3-phosphate. And so I, I, I wrote G6P as glucose 6-phosphate before, but just keep those, you know, distinguished because of the, uh, the abbreviation here. So G3P for glyceraldehyde 3-phosphate. And then the next molecule is 1,3-bisphosphoglycerate. So I'll call that BPG. So G3P and 1,3-BPG. My images here will be C3PO. C-3PO, and then from Star Wars, right? And so, you know, it doesn't have to be perfect. Obviously, G-3P and C-3PO are not quite the same, but the goal is just to have this associative word trigger the original thing, and I think you'll, be, you'll find that you're, you're able to do that. So for this one, I'm gonna focus on this 1-3 here. And 1-3, 13, kind of makes me think of uh, you know, bad luck, and so I might picture the Grim Reaper. Okay, so 13, Grim Reaper. And this BP here makes me think of BP, the oil company, so maybe he's got a BP oil can with him. And so we'll visualize the oven here. BP oil can, there's the oven, there's maybe some grates, there's, and this is gonna be a bad drawing, but there's C3PO standing there, and maybe the oven's getting very hot now, and he's starting to sweat, or to at least do his equivalent, equivalent thing of sweating, and so maybe you have the Grim Reaper sneaking up next to him and maybe he's you know he's going to be a good guy this time and he'll use that oil can that oil can and cool off C3PO and so those will be our image representations in this oven locus okay so let's move on to the next one our locus will be the sink and so our molecules are going to be 3 phosphoglycerate 3 phosphoglycerate and 2 phosphoglycerate, so very similar here. So what I'm gonna do is I look at this three and I think of handcuffs. It just kinda looks like handcuffs, right? And the PG makes me think of, you know, like a PG movie, so a little kid, so maybe it's a kid watching a movie, kid watching a PG movie, and then we have this two here, and I'm gonna focus on that two and think of a swan. So a swan, again, kinda looks like a two, right? So maybe we have this, this sink here, it's got water coming out, and there's this kid, and maybe he's handcuffed while watching a movie for, for whatever reason. And suddenly a swan maybe pops out of the drain. So here's our swan. Here's the two swan. And kind of kind of frightens this, this kid a little bit. And so he's handcuffed. So, so those will be our images for the sink. And let's keep going. And so we will go on to our last location, our last locus, and that's the shower. Okay, and our molecules are going to be PEP, that's phosphoenolpyruvate, and pyruvate. Okay, so PEP, I think of, I just look at that PEP and I think of Pepto-Bismol. So Pepto-Bismol, right? And pyruvate, I think of a pie, and then maybe just to cement this roux part of it, I'll think of it being a rhubarb pie. And so we, we can imagine that we're in the shower Right, and maybe we're you know we're starting to feel a little nauseous for whatever reason, and we take some Pepto Bismol, right, and then but it's too late, so we end up throwing up, right, and we throw up our the pie and the rhubarb the rhubarb pie that we just ate onto the floor despite the best efforts of the Pepto Bismol. So so there we have it, we have the entire glycolysis pathway memorized, and so don't forget to review tomorrow, a week from now, and I and I think you'll have it, and so this seems kind of complex, but. You know, it gets a lot easier, and I think that before long, you'll be well on your way to memorizing long sequences of information like glycolysis, and uh, it'll be much easier for you, I hope.